Hello, you guys. Welcome to my channel, Jesus Wants You. I'm the watchman on the wall, Nikki Hall, where I'm holy enough to pray for you and gangster enough to tell you how it is. Yes, indeed. I hope you have your Bibles. Welcome to my channel. Know that you cannot come to this channel unless you have your Holy Bible. Let's get out the Bible. Uh, there is a word tonight. It is late. But I'm here to slay. All right. So, um, you want to see me with these specs on? It's getting late, late in the evening. You know, your eyes get a little, you know, I'm looking in this Bible and it kind of look a little fuzzy. So, hey, it's all right. I put on the specs. All right. So, with that said, let's get your Bible. It's hot. The brew of the Hebrew inside of you. The brew of the Hebrew inside of you. Brew. The brew of the Hebrew. What is brewing on in the side of, inside of you? Jesus, the Jew, the Hebrew name, Yahshua. Jesus, your Savior, your Lord of Lords, your King of Kings. Please, all Hebrew, it's, it is Hebrewites that likes to come to the channels, ministry channels, and state y'all claim or whatever. You can't call Jesus Jesus. His name is Yahshua Hamashiach. Listen here. It ain't that type of party. My real name is Shaniquia, but I am Nikki, okay? I'm still that same person. All right, so we ain't even finna go there, all right? So, however you recognize him, just recognize that he is the King, the one and only, Jesus the Christ, our Savior. It's hot, saints of God. It is hot. It is hot. It is hot everywhere. I'm sorry for this camera shaking. Um, what I mean, not, uh, I mean spiritually um, and naturally, okay? It's hot. There is a lot of things going on in the world, a lot of distraction, a, a divide, racism, a, a divide as far as who got the jab, who didn't. And, you know, we can focus on those things or we can focus on the things seen and unseen and we can pray about it. Amen. Amen. So it's hot. The heat is turned up. When uh, this word basically came to me, uh, many of you know, I did a video recently and told you guys that um, after October, I would no longer have a job. Um, and I, I said this uh, many of times, I feel like that this is what I'm supposed to be doing anyway. But, um, you know, a lot of funds don't, enough funds <laughs> do not come through this ministry. And I pray that that would change. Um, but God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. So the brute of the Hebrew inside of you, the brute of the Hebrew inside of you, um, many of you probably because of the, the mandates and a lot of things that is going on in this world, you cannot look in this world and not say, that we are not living in the end times. There is no possible way. Everything that the Lord Jesus spoke over 2,000 plus years ago is definitely coming to pass, okay? Uh, what is happening now with this, this mandate uh, about the jab and your no job? A lot of you been, uh, you know, tested and the heat is turned up, so to speak, because you're not going to be able to pay your bills. You're not going to be able to um, eat if you don't have money. You know, you don't know where your next dime going to come from. You're not going to be able to work at that job that you may have loved. But see, this is where it comes down to the faith and our forefathers. And this is what this Bible God, you guys, was a picture and basically is the epitome of the things uh, to come, the things that we pattern after. You can, you can look at and say, hey, this is what happened then. You can bet your bottom dollar is uh, happening now. So, uh, you know, 
there are things to look at. He said, look to, when you start seeing these things, look to the heavens for your redemption, draw it nigh. Your redemption draweth nigh. All right. So I want to start at Daniel, the book of Daniel chapter three, because this definitely brought me to this, the book of Daniel, uh, verse six. And whoso falleth not down and worship it shall the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. The burning, fiery furnace. It is definitely hot, okay? The heat is definitely turned up. Whether you're going to stand, whether you're not. Whether we're going to be in fear or whether we're going to have the faith. You know, I choose to stand. Yes, I'm giving up my job. But he said what? He would never leave us or forsake us, and he would never let us be ashamed. So I get persecuted. I get called all kinds of names. Oh, you're taking it too far. Why would you leave your job? You know, the pressure is on. So you know that the Hebrew boys felt some pressure. They felt some pressure because in those days, there were Christian believers and they all fell to the systems of the world. And, you know, Nebuchadnezzar, you bow down to the image. You bow down to this image and you listen to the, the harp and the psaltery and, the, and this music and everything that it encompassed. And you worship me. And they said, oh, oh, no, 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 thy king, the only God that we serve, we would only bow down and worship him. At the end of the day, we ain't worshiping you because we don't bite the hand that feeds us, so to speak. And I'm paraphrasing. Many of you have heard of this story. So um, it also, the things that's going on in the world, it should also remind you of Revelation chapter 13. You won't be able to buy, sell, eat. You won't be able to do anything unless you take that mark. Y'all, this is like a precursor to what for what's to come. Okay. So uh, this brought me to this Hebrew, the Hebrew boys who had the brew. What brew? The power, the faith the indwelling of God's spirit on the inside of them. Greater is he that is in you than the he that is in the world. The he, what brew is brewing inside of you? Is the God, the living God, the Holy Spirit brewing inside of you? That faith, that strength, that power that dwells inside of you that says, I will stand in this evil day, having done all to stand. As for my house, we will serve the Lord. As for my house, this house will be called a house of prayer. Because at the end of the day, the God I serve, whether I live or whether I die, I will stand for the Lord. Somebody say, amen. I will not bow down to your king. I will not bow down to your little G God. I will not bow down to the hands of the enemy. Because we know the God we serve in order of our brew and not serve you, little G God. We're not doing it. We're going to be like our forefathers before us. We're going to be like the Hebrew boys. Okay? We're going to make you, and we, we go to our God, the Hebrew in us, the Hebrew that make you do what he do, baby. <laughs> yeah, our God will make you do what he do, all right? Or make you do what you do, because over here, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to pray. For God, we live, we honor, we serve, we stand, and not to the demands of the world and his kingdoms and his demonic powers. No. It is hot. The furnace is hot. But whether we perish or not, we stand, having done all to stand. Our God will deliver us. Daniel chapter 3, verse 11. 
And whoso falleth not down and worship it, that he should be cast into the midst of a fiery furnace. So Nebuchadnezzar made it the point that if you serve any other God and you didn't worship him, that you would be put in the fiery furnace. I mean, it's something to think about when you have to give up. You know, I don't know about you, you know, with my job, the things that I've been through, I can't wait to tell my testimony and it's coming real soon, hopefully this week. Um, but your job is probably something that you, you know, as a child, you always wanted to be a nurse. You always wanted to be a firefighter or a um, Whatever the case may be, you may love your job, but now it has come to this point. The heat is turned up, right? You got children. You got to pay bills. You got a house note. You got a car note. Somebody say the heat is turned up. What are you going to do? Will you bow down or will you stand? The Lord says, I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you. Those of good and not of evil. To see you to an expected end. Let me tell you something. Anytime that you stand for Christ. Let me read this. I want you to, uh, in Daniel chapter 3. I want you to look at verses 15 through 17. Watch this. Now, if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and the dulcimer, and all the kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast into the, the same hour, into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? That's verse 17, you guys. Hands. It's all about them hands. Y'all stay tuned. You have no idea what's in store. Oh, my goodness. Uh, verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hands. Okay, that was verse 15. I'm sorry. But 17 does mention hands. I know somebody was saying, that's 15. Which are you talking about? 17. But 17 does mention hands. Okay. So, uh, you know, to all the, the CNAs, the, the medical assistants, the registered certified medical assistants, the nurses, the blue collar, the white collar, the no collar, let me tell you something. Who, the Bible says, God says, whosoever left lands, homes, Basically, family, spouses, houses, jobs, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold. When the three Hebrew boys was in the fiery furnace, we know, and I'm going to paraphrase this for video time's sake, Nebuchadnezzar, he walked over to the fiery furnace when it was turned up as hot as he can stand it. And let me tell you something. The things that is going on in this world and, and everything is uncertain, it's hot. You know, we don't, we don't, you, 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 you feel in like, oh, I don't know where I'm going to turn, where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do. You know, you all down into your faith. You got being persecuted, racism going on, family coming against you, people you been praying for, they turned against you. You're the black sheep of the family. And let me tell you that the Hebrew boys felt like they were the black sheep because even though all those that said that they love God, they were all uh, bowed down to ne Nebuchadnezzar's throne and his image and all his little, little G gods and whatever else that he had to 
offer because of fear. And they knew what they should do, but because of fear, as what is going on today, a lot of people, and that, that may not have been your case, because at the end of the day, it's your choice. That is not what this is this message is about. But let's I'm talking about the word of God and, and what was going on in that system at this time, but let's be real. Like I said, I'm holy enough to pray for you, but I'm also gangster enough to tell you the truth. Amen. All right. So at the end of the day, let's let uh, God be truth and every man a liar. There is a lot of fear. A lot of people back in the day would call me the prophet of doom. You can call me what you, what you want to. But when you look at the television, honey, all that stuff that they're pouring out in that television ain't nothing but doom and gloom. But this kind of stuff here, the things that I done prophesied about, even that hurricane that is coming this way, but by the spirit of God, giving God all the glory, the things that he had put in the prophet's mouth to speak for, to tell people about and warn that these things are coming it's coming and people will say oh every time you turn around she's talking about floods and this and that and that ain't coming to a louisiana and i thought you said this was gonna happen it ain't happening and da 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 and the, the tv got more doom and gloom than i do but people bow down to that but see, over here, the Lord said, whosoever shall call upon his name shall be saved. Okay. The world and his systems is not thinking about you. Okay. It's hot on your job right now. You being oppressed, depressed, living them less, look trying yet to pass another test, looking like a mess when you go home. Come on, somebody. It's hot in there. It's hot in here. The fire, the furnace, the fire in the furnace is turned up. But know that if the fire in the furnace is turned up, that know that God, the living God, Jesus, the Christ, is going to stand up. He is getting ready to come and work and operate on your behalf because he said he will never let us be ashamed. Know that when the fiery furnace was turned up and it was hot, the Hebrew boys was not burned or when that was not singed, not a hair was hurt or touched on their little pretty heads. Know that the Lord thy God that you serve, he will never let you be ashamed and he is going to show up on your behalf. When you look at these other verses, watch this. At the end of the day, see, when you read this chapter and it said, and all, it all falls back on the image and who we are identified with. Who you identify with. Notice that everything that is talked about right now is about identity. When you call your bank right now and you put in your information and say, thank you, we have identified you. See, a lot of people, or, or, or some people, like when they were handing out money, a lot of people were getting checks. Some getting direct deposits. And then it, it probably was coming direct deposit and all of a sudden it's coming in a check. You'd be like, wait a minute. And then it stops. Oh, now you need to prove your identity. See, I got another video to to to, to do, um, and hopefully it, it would definitely be tomorrow, uh, Lord willing. But I need y'all to see what is definitely happening. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the Lord showed up, but watch this. <clears throat> I read verse 15 through 17. Let's look at 18 and 19. It says, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his facades was changed against Sharat, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace, watch this, one, seven times. 
That's that one in seven again. I can't, I didn't even mention how many times I saw 17 while doing this video. Okay. One in seven times more than it was want to be heated. Okay. So turn, uh, look at verse 27 through 30. It says, and the princes and the governors and captains and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair or the head singed, neither were the coats changed, nor the smell of fire passed on them. But watch this. Nebuchadnezzar said this. He said, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his who? Servants that trusted in him. <clears throat> you see where this is going? The Lord said, whosoever trusts in him shall be made as Mount Zion. Whosoever shall trust in him shall be planted like a tree and not be moved. Okay? If we trust in him, he will not let us be ashamed. People going to talk about you for you taking your stance. I don't know. what You could be taking a stance uh, not even regarding the jab. It could be something else, but you're taking a stance for God. Let me tell you something. Anytime you do something for the Lord, just like he did with the Hebrew boys, he came in the midst. He's going to show up because God is a man that he shall not lie, a God that he shall not repent. He's going to show up. His word will not return void. No, that watch this. In verse, uh, I'm going to skip on to 30. Um, he said, well, 29 and 30. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be put cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted he promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is the enemy being made the footstool. So he set out to, ki to kill them. But if, when you further read, the Lord showed up and they got promoted. So it may be looking dim and grim for you right now. But this means that the Lord is getting ready to show up in your life right now the lord is getting ready to show up in your life right now i prophesy to you people single moms nurses cnas mas doctors blue collar white collar whoever you are you will not be defeated. You will not be caught off guard. You will not be disappointed because the Lord standing for him, that means that he's getting ready to show up like he did for the Hebrew boys. And when he show up, there was a promotion. There was a decree. There was blessings. And I'm here to bless you tonight to let you know that it is high time for you that the Lord is getting ready to show up in your deliverance, show up in your healing, show up in your financial department, show up in your marriage. The Lord is getting ready to show up on your job to all those people talking about you. And when that promotion happens, whether it's spiritual or natural, they ain't going to be able to say, they're going to be like, wait a minute. Is that who I think it is? Wow. I, I, she didn't have nothing. Nikki sleeping on an air mattress. She was sleeping on an air mattress. She didn't have nothing. She was on the street. What, what, what? How did she get that? The Lord is getting ready to show up. He is getting ready to show up. Do not be dismayed. Encourage yourself. I encourage you. You guys, it is time to pray. 
it is time to pray. The enemy is doing things in a lot of people's dreams. Yes, to make you tired, to make you sleepy, to make you weary, to make you not want to read your Bible, to make you not want to pray. If you don't know what to pray, grab the book of Psalms, okay? With that said, if this word has been a blessing to you, I will have um, in a the description box first, I must say this, if you haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, please look at the description box, read the prayer, accept him, repent of your sins, accept the Lord Jesus Christ. He is here for you, all his grace and mercy. He is ready to forgive you with open arms, ready to turn back and take uh, your hand, backsliders, whoever you are, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God, but it's the goodness of God that brings a man to repentance. Don't believe what the enemy and the lies of the enemy is telling you and try to make you think that you're not saved because you fell off the wagon or you did something. The heat is turned up, honey. You're going to make mistakes. The heat is turned up. Okay, the devil is tempting for you to drink. The devil is tempting to you for you to backslide. But God, but God sent his only son that you may be saved. He's here for you. All you have to do is ask for forgiveness, a new day, according to his tender loving kindness and his mercy. He's ready to accept you back. He loves you. He loves you. That's why he died. That's why he came. Um, again, if this has been a blessing to you, look at the description box. Uh, please um, donate. I have Cash App, P.O. Box, and PayPal. Um, yeah. So, with that said, I love you guys. See you next video. Thanks.